in this class uh, we will discuss about the management of hypertension, nutritional management of hypertension. So we all know that we are supposed to give DASH diet. So DASH stands for dietary approaches to stop hypertension. So what is there in it? I mean if you look at the DASH diet and the regular food pyramid, you don't see much of a difference except for fruits and vegetables. So, and apart from DASH diet, what else we are supposed to do in nutritional management of hypertension? We need to decrease the salt, restriction of salt. We all know how much of salt a person has to take in a day, how many grams and how many milligrams. But if we want to manage hypertension nutritionally, we need to understand what our goals are. Okay, so the doctors, any kind of lifestyle disease, hypertension is a lifestyle disease, any kind of lifestyle disease first starts with one, lifestyle changes and second one is medical nutrition therapy. Only these two fail, then only you have to go to the third one that is pharmacotherapy. Okay, but many of the doctors due to lack of like right kind of nutritional guidance or resources or support, they give very less value to these two things and they put them on pharmacotherapy. So, what kind of lifestyle and uh, medical nutrition therapy approaches a person ideally should be, uh, should a dietitian be doing? We try to understand that. So, to understand that, what kind of medication a doctor is giving? Isn't it? What kind of medication is doctor is giving? How they are managing it? We all know that hyper uh, blood pressure means from left ventricle, when blood is pumped, it is coming out through a tube. So this part, left ventricle, is a sac and the blood is coming from that sac into a tube. So obviously the tube doesn't have enough diameter to accommodate all the uh, blood that is there in the left ventricle. So to accommodate more blood, the blood expands. The blood vessel expands and this expansion happens during systole when heart contracts and when it is relaxing it will come down to normal size and with again next bit it is going up so blood is moving like a bulb in the blood vessel so from left heart if the blood is coming to my left hand I can see this is the artery all the blood vessels you see on your surface are veins arteries are deep inside only here we see the artery so we know it is flowing now <coughs> it is the pressure of the blood that is exerted on the walls that is called hypertension let's say you take a cross section of this this is a lumen of a blood vessel right this is the lumen and the blood is moving like this so it is the pressure exerted by the blood on lateral walls of the blood vessel. This is called normal BP. So during systole it is 120 millimeters of mercury and during diastole it is 80 millimeters of mercury. Okay. But in some cases, but in some cases it goes up or this may go up and we call this condition uh, beyond normal what we call this as this is hypertension usually 140, 140 that's what we see. Now how the doctors are managing it through medicine. If we understand how the drugs are working then it is very easy to find out what kind of food actually do the same job that an antihypertensive is doing. <coughs> now, this is a blood vessel, so there is fluid in it. Okay, let's say it can accommodate from this part to this part, it can accommodate 30 ml. Now, instead of 30 ml, the same tube contains 40 ml. Which condition? This is condition A, this is a condition B. Same size blood vessel, here it is having only 30 ml, same size blood vessel but holding 40 ml. So which one will be more? A condition or B condition, the pressure will be more. A or B? Yeah, it's very simple, right? B. Because in the same, in the same blood vessel, in the same blood vessel, so uh, more volume. So more volume means more pressure. So the first line of treatment in hypertension through pharmacotherapy is giving some diuretics to take away the 
fluid. Okay, any drug that is ending with H, metoprolol H, etan H, you have to see the labels of the medicine which people are using and see the compound. Anything that is having H next to a tablet, it is hydrochlorothiazide. So, how, what is their function? Removing the excess water from this circulation so that there will be less pre pressure. And second medicine they use is beta blockers. Okay, what is it? What does it is doing? It is the blocking beta receptors. Beta receptors of what? Cardiac muscle. See, this is the left ventricle, heart, and this is the one which is pumping blood. I mean, left ventricle uh, wall is like much thicker compared to the rest of the chambers. It is pumping. So to pump that, it has to have a nervous connection, right? It is supplied by <coughs> vagus nerve and the beta receptors, what they do is, they are adrenergic. That means, when more adrenaline is there, they pump with more force. So the doctors assume that the heart is working so hard to pump because of adrenergic activity. So beta adrenergic activity, so we we'll cut down, we we'll block by using beta blockers. Etanolol and metoprolol, all of them they come under these beta blockers. Next one is what? Calcium channel blockers, right? Anything, verapamil, nifedipine, all of them they come under calcium channel blockers. Now, we all know for muscle to contract, we all know for muscle to contract, what do we require? We require calcium, okay? So, Excess calcium leads to a condition known as stiff muscle, tetany. Right? So, if a muscle, a smooth muscle, needs to contract, the calcium should go inside, then only it will contract. Right? Now, what is this drug doing? It is blocking the calcium channels. So, if the calcium is not going in, the muscle cannot contract. Now, try to understand. We have muscles lining. A blood vessel like this. These are all muscles, and you have basement membrane. This is the blood vessel, and inside you have endothelium. Let's say this is our endothelium innermost layer, endothelial layer. Next to that, you have basement membrane, muscular, connective tissue, all of them there. This is the muscle. Now if the blood vessel is contracting, what happens to the lumen? In relaxed state, blood vessel is like this. In contracted state, when it is contracting, what happens? Lumen becomes small. So that means what? There is more pressure. Same volume. When it is relaxed, vessel is relaxed, blood is flowing smoothly. Now it has become constricted. Constricted means what? The blood, the pressure is more on the walls. We are squeezing, right? So to prevent this squeezing or constriction of the smooth muscle in blood vessels, we are using calcium channel blockers. Likewise, we are using ACE inhibitors. So what does it say? What does it say? This gives us an opportunity to understand why diabetics. Can we give foods that will help in maintaining the fluid volume? Do we have diabetic foods or not? We know so many foods, right? And beta blockers. If the person knows how to control his sympathetic drive, so anxiety, whatever stress, all these things, if they are able to manage, we don't require this. And calcium channel blockers, smooth muscle. Okay, so what are the foods that will relax the vessels? Are there anything, any mineral? For example, magnesium. Calcium and magnesium work in tandem, one for and one another against. So if you can improve the magnesium in this case, then the muscle will smoothly relax. So the blood vessel walls will remain open. Likewise, ACE inhibitors, how do they do? So all these things we can understand and manage effectively provided we know what is the physiology, 